What's up everyone, Adam Saxon with Gynecube. And in today's roundup, we've got a ton of community items, plus a little something extra at the end. And just a reminder, if this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And you can hit that bell icon to get notified when we've produced new content. Straight to your inbox. All right, let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Marco Russo where he looks at generate and row instead of using ad columns inside of DAX. And the example he uses is creating a calendar table. If you've ever been in a session that either Patrick or myself has done, chances are you've heard us talk about date tables and you've seen us use some DAX expressions. This is a like next level thing for creating date tables. I love it. And we're giving a pre-con on Friday in Louisiana and hmm, this may have been coincidence, it may have not, but here you go. A great new DAX approach to creating day tables using generate and rows. So if you're creating day tables and you're using ad columns, or if you're not even doing that and you're doing all the columns by hand, I highly recommend you go check out this blog post. Mike Carlo has a blog over on Power BI Tips where he looks at using the rank X function inside of DAX to get a rank of items to display in your reports. Hopefully this isn't turning into a DAX video. Anyway, if you've struggled with trying to get a rank or you're not even familiar with how to do this, be sure to check out this blog post. He does a great job of just walking through setting up the items before you would use rank and then afterwards when you would actually use rank, how to use it, what it displays and so forth. So be sure to check out this blog post. Gil Revive over on Data Chance got some custom visual love for us. Whew, not all about DAX. In his blog post, he looks at how you can actually get custom visuals inside of Power BI Desktop. It used to be you had to download these manually, and now he's going to show you the new approach and how you can find the latest new custom visuals that are available for Power BI. If you're using custom visuals or maybe you didn't know custom visuals existed, go check out this blog post and see all of the great stuff you can go and integrate into your reports. Megan Longoria has got a blog post over out on Data Savvy and she looks at how you install both the 32-bit and the 64-bit version of the ACE driver. This is the access driver to access access. This isn't necessarily specific to Power BI, although I did a video and blog a while back about this same situation in Power BI. She's looking at it from the SSIS perspective. It exists for Power BI as well. So this is any application that you're trying to connect to access with. If you've struggled with this and you're not really sure what to do, the key is you've got to be a little passive. I challenge you to go look at this blog post to see what I mean. Prathi Kamasani has a blog post about embedding Power BI reports into OneNote. I don't know if you use OneNote, I use OneNote a lot and we use this for team meetings, we use it for you know, PM activity, specs for the product. We use OneNote everywhere at Microsoft. And the thought of embedding a Power BI report inside of it to give context and meaning is a pretty neat idea. She walks through an approach of how to do this using the publish to web feature. So this means that you're exposing a report out to the internet. You may not want to do that internally. I'm probably not going to do that with especially like internal spec stuff or proprietary Microsoft data. Not very smart if I want to keep my job. The reason I bring this up is Devsco created an Office add-in to embed Power BI items into Office. This was primarily looked at from a PowerPoint perspective because that was a really cool item before we had any other abilities to do so, but you can probably take that add-in and use it with OneNote as well. I haven't tried it personally, but give it a whirl and see if it works. Power BI had its second birthday last Monday, and here at Microsoft, we wanted to say thank you to the community. Last year, the community came together and did a video saying thank you to Microsoft and the Power BI team specifically. This year, the Power BI team wanted to say thank you to the community. I didn't make this video, but I did participate in it. And again, thank you so much for everything you guys do in the community. We love you. Check out this blog post and check out the video that folks put time in to create for you. I also had a few questions about the other video I mentioned I was gonna be doing. It was an experiment. It looked epic in my head. Didn't work out. So I'm gonna chalk that up to a failure. Yes, I fail sometimes too. And it was a great learning experience. I did learn a couple things, but ultimately that video didn't pan out. So 
Next year, I will come up with something different and try and put something together. All right, what was your favorite item? Go and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. Or if there was something I didn't mention that you thought was awesome, leave that down there as well. As always, the links for everything I talked about plus some bonus links are down in the description below. So go check that out. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit it hard if you want. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.